Joy in my heart, joy in my mind, joy since a happy day. Joy in my feet, joy in my hands, joy in every way. God took those worldly desires, gave me heavenly fire. Now I got a brand new goal. Since I met this man called Jesus Christ, I got the joy, joy, joy in my soul. Well, thank you for joining us again today on A Woman's Joy. My name is Donette Douglas. I'll be your host for the next half hour. And again, our dear sister and friend in Christ, Sherry sister. McDaniels here. I just love it when she comes. We uh, tape two shows and, and uh, we just love the Word of God, I'll Amen. tell you. And we want you to know the Word of God. Amen. It would be a personal relationship that you have when you know the Word. And the Word of God is what? Jesus Christ. Amen. Know him as your savior. Our scripture, we're starting from John 17, 34. Oh no, it's not 34, 13, I'm sorry. John 17, 13. And now come I to thee. If you got a red letter Bible, this will be in red letters because Jesus was in the garden praying before he was captured and crucified. And now come I to thee. I'm coming to you, God, my heavenly father. These things I speak in the world because he was man, son of man. He walked this earth. He lived in this world. He was not of this world, but he lived in the world, just like you and I today. That they might have my joy. That's the believers, those who have chosen mm -hmm. to follow me, to lay down their lives, pick up the cross and follow them. That their joy might be, that my joy, Jesus said, shall be fulfilled in themselves also. Wow, to have the joy of the Lord. I'm telling you, for many years, there came a time when my life all fell apart and I was Miss Pity Party. I was Miss Pity Party. But one day, whew, that word came back to me. See, that's why you've got to have this word in you. You might be going through a storm, a hard time in your life, but if you study the word, if you've meditated on it, memorize scripture that holy spirit will bring that scripture back and i remember i was sitting feeling sorry for myself and i heard know you not that i came that you would have life and have it more abundantly well that's john 10 10. Mm -hmm. and i ah, it was like the light bulb moment i thought ah, yes and i've chosen to sit here and just be depressed and feeling sorry for myself ah, Jesus came, I would have life. That life is there for me. I'm his child. Now, I can't say it was instantly, just that minute, everything in my life just went great. Because even if you're a Christian, that mm -hmm. same storms and these battles of this old world, because we live in a fallen world, it's gonna come upon you. But from that moment on, I looked at things different because I knew Jesus was with me. And he came that I would have life. And then as storms started coming, I would find, why have I got peace in my life? Mm -hmm. And I realized, because Jesus is here with me. He's on the boat with me. He's not going to sink because he's on the boat with me. Oh, I'm so thankful for this word. This mm -hmm. word. I'm thankful for Jesus, the Son of God. Thankful for the Holy Spirit, that comforter that is there to help me in those hard times and the good times. Amen? Amen? So Sherry, I'm getting all excited here and we haven't even got started, <laughs> but we've been talking a new series, Prepare Ye the Way. Mm -hmm. We had studied the Gospel of John and we used the book, The Miraculous Gospel of John with commentary by Jim Hockaday. I suggest you buy this. It takes every verse has notes, explanations, meanings of words, other scriptures that refer. Mm -hmm. I know you will be blessed by the teaching mm -hmm. that comes from the word here of the Gospel of John. And uh, we have been doing a series, like I said, Prepare Ye the Way. And we are now on the third verse. <laughs> but you know, when you really study God's word and you dissect it, uh, God will send you to another scripture. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's unending the revelation mm -hmm. that God and the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. can give you when you really get into this word. So I'm going to 
read the first three verses, because we're going to go to verse three this week. And then Sherry's going to share with you a life experience that she had. You know, remember last week, uh, John wrote in 1 John that I witnessed this, I lived this, I touched this, I seen this. Well, she's got an experience she's going to share with you to help us teach us more about the Word, which is Jesus Christ. But John 1, 1 through 3, In the beginning was the Word, and this is a capital W, which refers to Jesus, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Now, verse 3, All things were made through Him, capital H, and without Him, which is referring to Jesus, the Word, Without him, nothing was made that was wow. made. Wow. I don't know why they say there's millions and millions of living species on the planet and they're discovering new every day. Every day. Not a single one. Not a single one was excluded without him knowing it. He, he, it was all through him. Yeah, that's right. The word. The th you know, how many times have we said this? Back to the beginning. Back to the beginning. When God spoke those words in the yes. first six days of creation mm -hmm. about uh, life coming into being and all the plants and all the animals and everything that creeps upon the earth. Right. We get it. That's, mm -hmm. This is what, exactly what he's talking about. Right. And it's still happening to this day. Still. Even universe they tell us has expanded some so many thousands of miles every single year mm. that came from the book of Genesis hmm. everything he spoke it everything Dang. all things were made through him and without him nothing that was made was made mm -hmm. and that creation power mm -hmm. if you will is so strong is still happening today. That's the God mm -hmm. that created us. That's the Word that's inside of us that has the power to create and create and create. All that was made that was made through Him. Amen. I mean, when you start, like you said, if you take one verse, mm -hmm. and we talked a little bit about this last program, if you get revelation from the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit on one verse mm -hmm. and what that means for your life, if you can grab hold of that, that can literally, as you said in, in the opening, change your world. It maybe didn't happen that exact moment, but it changed your world. Because of the Word. Amen. In the beginning, the Word. So the life experience, if I may, before mm -hmm. I start. Right. The word prepare means to make ready beforehand. Right. So the life experience, my son and his beautiful wife and family made plans mm -hmm. to build a house mm -hmm. near us across the field on the, on the backside of where we live. And so I observed all of this firsthand, had my hands on it, uh, listened, watched, was a part of, and they just moved into their, their house um, back in March. Mm -hmm. But months and months and months before that mm -hmm. began the preparation. Mm -hmm. They had all kinds of plans and deciding what they wanted to, uh, where they wanted to build and what they wanted to build and the materials they wanted to use. But you know, Donna, long before that contractor began, began the work right. on the soil, uh. the preparation of the soil. Now, immediately, a lot of your listeners should have went to scriptures that they mm -hmm. uh, can recall about prepara preparation of the ground, preparation right. of the soil of our hearts, right. and like the work that God does in our hearts. So, we have clay mm -hmm. 
out where we live. So clay is a good thing, but it's also a difficult material uh -huh. to work with. Right. So my son did much of the work himself. And every day, even if I couldn't see him out there, I could hear him on that mm -hmm. bulldozer. He was out there and he was uh, digging the dirt up. He was uh, breaking ground. He was leveling the dirt. Uh, in some areas, he even had to compact the dirt. But he would work long, hard hours preparing that soil. And I would think, well, just how long is this process going to take? Now, he, he doesn't operate a bulldo bulldozer professionally, uh, so I think it did take him a little longer than what it mm -hmm. would have taken someone who's very versed in it. But he uh, spent days preparing that soil, and it finally dawned on me, you know, he's going to move his precious wife and uh -huh. children into a home that is built on that soil. He understands the concept of the foundation being right, because if it's not, mm -hmm. then everything about that house could not be right. And if I might, could I read from the book of Luke? Uh-huh, yes. Uh -huh. In Luke chapter 6, verses 46 through 49, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what mm -hmm. I say? As for everyone who comes to me and hears my word and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation mm -hmm. on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck the house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation, or in other versions it might say on the sand. Mm -hmm. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Do we understand the importance of this word? Mm being our foundation. That's what you just said. All things were made through mm -hmm. him and without him, nothing that was made was made. Mm. He is the bedrock, the foundation of relationship with our creator. Without him, mm -hmm. we have no foundation. No. The word, that's why, and you've been emphasizing mm -hmm. this over the last uh, few programs mm -hmm. as we've begun talking about this. When you see word mm -hmm. in the Bible and it's capitalized, mm -hmm. that's Jesus because Jesus was there from the very beginning. And God built everything on this word, this foundation. And I wrote this. My son did everything that was necessary to make that soil ready for the foundation of that house that they were going to build on. Mm -hmm. All the time, energy, and effort because he knew the importance of building that house started with the preparation of having yes. a solid foundation. Yes. So, you know, we, we say this all the time, back to the beginning, back to the beginning, back to the beginning, back to the book of Genesis. Right. right. And when you read, I have a friend that says it all the time, our dear sister, Miss mm -hmm. Linda Crane, that we'll be talking about scripture verses. She's a lot like me and you, just <laughs> study and talk about the word. And she'll say, you know, God just took me back to the beginning again. Of course he would. In the beginning mm -hmm. was the Word. In the beginning is the foundation that we need to build the Word or to build our lives on. Yes. We believe it in our heart. Amen. Confess it with our mouth. It starts internally and it lives out externally His Word in our life. Whew. The yeah. Word is a very it's everything. It's everything. It's everything. How can we exist without the Word? We have the example. That's how God did it all, mm -hmm. created it all. So for us to think that we're to do otherwise? 
Well, we see it all around us in this evil, dark world. What happens when you haven't built a foundation on Jesus mm -hmm. Christ? That's exactly right. Uh, life doesn't go so well. It may for a little while, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, the enemy will uh, deceive us that, yeah, that's a good thing you've done. And for a while it seems to be okay. And then all of a sudden that foundation is not the solid rock, yeah. which is Jesus Christ. It's the crumbling sand mm -hmm. and it will start breaking down. Yes. Our life will go tumbling, you know. Yes. Um, uh, we've said it on this show several times. If we'll get into sin, we'll start looking for uh, other ways to... Um, satisfy this flesh, mm -hmm. more or less, and we'll find that sin will take us farther than we want to go. Mm -hmm. We will stay longer than we want to stay. You just can't just get up and walk out of sin that easy. The enemy is not going to let go. He's got a hook in you. And you know, when you're fishing, mm -hmm. he'll let you go out and roam a little bit, and then you'll roll in that string, you know. He'll let you go out and he'll roll in. See, he just deceives you, you know. He's got you in a stronghold. Mm -hmm. But, um, I lost my train of thought there, but um, there's nothing good about not building your life on Jesus Christ. You know, Donna, I'm sitting here while you're talking about the fishing example. I'm thinking, you know, there are fishing shows where they go mm -hmm. out on the ocean and they catch these huge, huge fish. And mm -hmm. this process can take hours. Oh, hours. Hours. But it becomes a battle of who's the strongest, mm -hmm, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. The strongest sure that 400 pound marlin might be, mm -hmm. it will become a battle of wills. That yeah. fisherman, he reels and he pulls. Mm -hmm. And as long as that hook, like you talked about with yeah. the devil, the only thing the devil is doing is John 10.10. 10. Yeah. He comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. And if he can take this word out of your mouth, Mm -hmm. He has the ability to do so, and he will just keep wearing you down and wearing you down mm -hmm. and wearing you down until he has literally, we have given him, we just, how, how often do you see, hear people say, well, that's it, I just give up. Oh, yeah. I can't take another step. Yeah. Hopelessness. To but bear. Jesus said right in the middle of verse, and that stops the enemy. In the name of Jesus, the Word of God, have come to give you life, life. and more abundantly. abundantly. So there's a huge teaching oh, right yes. there. The Word, Jesus, and the Word, the promise, is what can redeem our life to abundance. Whereas the, the, the enemy has got that hook and trying to wear us mm -hmm. down to just take us out. Yeah, take Pull us, us out. out of water like a fish out of water. How long will it last? Yeah. And how long will we last, though, without the Word? Not we will long. be overcome if we do not have the Word, mm -hmm. the Word and the Word. Yeah. When you take a plant, you know, some people, they say, have a green thumb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Their plants grow looking big and healthy, and uh, I think they get a lot of TLC, mm -hmm. and they get light at the sunlight at the right times, and they get Ooh, water. Here you go, here you go. They get water at the right time. <laughs> Jesus, again, he's the living water. <laughs> the Word is mm -hmm. the living water. And I've had plants, you know, maybe I've forgotten to water it for a few days and they you go in there and the leaves are all drooped over and maybe they're mm -hmm. starting to turn brown you water that plant it takes little time oh, not little very bit. much time all of a sudden the leaves are coming up life. and it sprouts out new with life comes back mm -hmm. see so don't believe the enemy that you've went too far that you can't come back it's a lie because the minute jesus christ comes Amen. something happens Amen. something happens it Amen. sure does. It brings life. Well, if I may, read yeah. verse 5. Yes. And the light shines in the darkness, mm. and the darkness did not comprehend it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that darkness that the enemy wants to pull us down into. But Jesus said, I. And we know he's the light. Yes. Capital L. Yes. The light of the world. It, he showed us the way out of darkness. He paid the price for us to be able to come out of the darkness. And like you said, it may not happen this very moment, 
but something inside of us just changed so dramatically, mm -hmm. so completely, so thoroughly that our eternities just changed from an eternity in condemnation and death mm -hmm. and hell to an eternity in light and mm -hmm. life and love mm -hmm. with our God and our Creator. Everything that God yes. did right here in the beginning, yes, in the beginning was restored at that moment mm -hmm. when we bring the light into our life, accept yeah. the light, the word. The light. Verse 4, mm -hmm. which we skipped. Mm -hmm. oh. In him was life, <laughs> and the life was the light of men. There it is. In him was light. Mm -hmm. In him was light. It is in him, the same as in verse 3. All things were made through him, mm -hmm. and without him, nothing was made that was made mm -hmm. in him, in him. I think sometimes we have our path of life distorted or um, misguided or missed entirely. Jeremiah says our lives are not our own to live. I think sometimes uh, we miss the fact that we are creations of God. Yes, He loves us. Yes, He gave His all for us. Yes, He has good plans for us, but we are His. Mm -hmm. And we fall off into darkness if we try to follow a path right. that is not in Him. Right, in Him. In Him. Yeah. The commentary in here that uh, Jack, um, well, I don't know why I want to call him Jack, <laughs> Jim, I'm so sorry, Jim Hockaday, for verse 3, everything created originates in Jesus. Everything. And Sherry's been speaking that, but sometimes we have to hear something over and over and over. And again, I say. Since all things were made through him, Jesus, the actions of Jesus on the earth became crucial for our lives if we desire to see miracles manifested as he did. Remember, John is not only singling out the supreme authenticity yep, of Jesus as God, he also intertwines his existence to ours. If Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, spoke and the world came into existence, then we <laughs> must learn to speak to our world mm -hmm. if we are to see his will manifested. And what would we speak, dear sister? The life. word. Yeah, the word. Life. The Bible says, choose life. That's why Choose the book life. of John is called Prepare the Way. Yeah, prepare the way. Prepare the way. It's got all the information to prepare the way. John spent his whole ministry mm. in that. Mm -hmm. Preparing people to hear what? The words the word. of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Prepared them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The light. He is the life. The life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Mm. You know, you may have, um, and even people that go to church, like I said, sometimes just because someone says they're Christian, may I mean that they haven't grown. They've received mm. Jesus, they've got the head knowledge, they believe that, but that's as far as it has gone in their life, okay? We talked about the head knowledge and the personal relationship, the heart knowledge. It changes. Uh, I can't explain it all, but I can tell you, I verify, I'm a witness. It changed. My life changed. Yes. I went to church. I've always loved to go to church. I love to talk about Jesus. I would invite people to church. You love God. I love to sing the songs. Yeah, I loved God. Mm -hmm. But it was not the same as when I got it down here in my heart because then I did not want to not please my father. Amen. He became my life. <laughs> he became my life, and, and you have to experience it, and I pray you all have experienced that. But people walk in darkness, even those, like I said, that have walked in, that sit in church, because it's still here. If not, let it come down to their heart. 
And that's a dangerous place. Yes. That's a dangerous place. Because I'm telling you, I'm kind of greedy. I want it all, okay? I, I want to know all I can know about the Lord. I want to experience what He wants me to experience. I want to go and minister to those He wants me to minister to. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm greedy. I want more. I'm like Sherry. There's more to this. There's more to this going to church on Sunday, coming home, yes. and um, trying to live a good life. There's more to it. Uh, because once you have that relationship, it's not so much you're trying to live it, you just naturally live it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because it's utmost in your thoughts, it's utmost in your heart mm -hmm. to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's the one you want to please. Mm -hmm. I grew up for 28 or 30 years, I was a man pleaser. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anymore, I'm not a man pleaser. What you think of me, that's your, uh, that's your right to have that to opinion. Mm -hmm. But what God thinks of me means a whole lot to me. Mm -hmm. He's the one I want to please. Amen. So to be able to do that, I've got to have that foundation. Yes. I've got to know about the light. I've got to walk in the light. I have got to search out his word, get to know the word, not just quote you a scripture, but get to know him personally. I have to build that foundation Amen. on the solid rock. And that's what you've got to do. That's what we all have to do according mm -hmm. to God's word, if mm -hmm. you read it. Right, mm -hmm. Sherry? Amen. We got about a minute left. Is there something you'd like to say well, today before we... Well, I would we... just like to add that um, in October, no, no, oh, well, somewhere in there, I, no, it was back in the summer, my um, children were able to move into a beautiful, beautiful home. Oh, yes. And now they are enjoying this beautiful, beautiful home. home. Yes. But because the foundation was so important mm -hmm. to them, mm -hmm. they will not just have this home for a day. Yeah. They'll have it for the duration of their lives. That's right. Our lives can be mm -hmm. eternal when our foundation is built mm -hmm. on the rock and Jesus Christ our Savior. And it will not just stop there. Mm -hmm. It will be passed oh, on to their children yes. and mm -hmm. their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren. Mm -hmm. See, it goes. It flows. Preparing the when way. When you make that foundation Jesus Christ, you will leave a legacy for mm -hmm. your family and all of those around you you will leave that legacy mm -hmm. of living a life for Jesus. Amen. Letting that word become real to you. Letting that life of Jesus, that abundant life, <laughs> Amen. be there for you and all those around you. Sherry, it's been great. God bless it's you. It's been wonderful. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Have joy in your heart today. Ask Jesus in, okay? One day I was walking in a world of sin, no rest for my weary soul. Then I met a man, said he'd be my friend, all my burdens he did roll. He took those worldly desires, gave me heavenly fire, now I got a brand new goal. Since I met this man called Jesus Christ, I got the joy, joy, joy.